Studios Original. Hello and welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite unsolved mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. Who knows, we might even solve the case. I'm Allie Siegel. And I'm Melissa Stetton. Web Crawlers has a Patreon to get access to rewards, bonus episodes, videos, shoutouts, and merchandise discounts. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. You can donate as little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons. And December, we're really going to start knocking stuff yeah, out. Yeah, we put out one mini episode, but we're going to do a bunch more. Yeah, we're going to do a bunch more. I Maybe even like... You might be seeing them one a week. Yeah, and maybe why some, not? Why not? Why and maybe not? some after episodes. We're really going to start. We're going to start pumping it out. 2020 is our year. Do you guys do video? We, we have do. done video before. Okay. We're going to start mm-hmm. doing some more. I wonder if... We've done a live mm, video before. Mm, oh. We've live streamed. I wonder if we just start recording us recording these. Oh, that's so meta. That's a good idea. That's what um, Joe Rogan does. Yeah. And, and he has the number one podcast in the world. And there you go. There right. you go. But also like people love seeing gals just gab. Behind they the scenes content. <laughs> and that might get you some Amazon wish lists, if you know Ooh, what I mean. I am trying to get a new um, toaster. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is Twitch? That's like video it's games, video I games. think. No, I think... I think, but it's just a streaming service. They do hangout stuff where people just oh, yeah, hang they out, and they make thousands and thousands. Are you of trying dollars. to get us into porn? I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to do anything. I'm laying out the option. No, a lot of, a lot of podcasters use Twitch too because it's like people can interact and stuff. So anyway, if you guys are maybe interested, let's hear from from the yeah. the listeners. If what that's do you something, like? yeah, Maria wants us to go on free nude girls xxx <laughs> dot edu just edu. trying to get us paid yeah <laughs> our black friday cyber monday deals were off the chain off the rails yeah you guys purchased a lot we're super grateful also me maria and melissa i <laughs> What what I done? went on to Twitch, <laughs> and a, I know you guys can't hear this. Game? I know you guys can't hear this that are listening. But there's a football game playing <laughs> through our head. Is this an illegal TV stream? Yeah, what no, is, is that? What this Twitch is, is Twitch? Okay, continue. Oh, it's and like now the Budweiser commercial. Now there's Someone a vacuuming, vacuuming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us. I bought a Bigfoot hat. Yeah, what did you, you did. Buy? What did you buy? I bought an a Ouija mug and. A Satan, Satan, Satan shirt. Nice. Those are cute. Yeah. Maria? I bought a sweatshirt that says, till death do us part. Cute. In white. And nice. I got it in medium so it could be kind of baggy, you know, and I Good could idea. just look kind of cool. Yeah. That's cool. smart. If you want to buy our merch, you can go to webcrawlerspod.com or hothorse.horse if you're nasty. And we'll have regular sales now because uh, you guys like and deserve them. Uh, we also have a cameo. If you want us to record a special holiday greeting for you, we'll do a discount for December. Yeah. Um, a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, whatever. If you want to break up with your significant other or ask someone out. <gasps> Did you see that Mark McGrath yes, broke Sugar Ray. up with someone yes. on Cameo? Did you oh see that? Oh my God, his girlfriend? No, no, no. He, someone paid him yeah. to break up with his girlfriend. Oh, Mark. Would I you know. do that? Yeah, for Fuck money. Yeah, we do, do anything it for, money. for money. I know. That's why I brought up <laughs> <laughs> hotnudegirls.edu. <laughs> when I was a fetish writer for Vice, the only <laughs> thing I've never t- I've never done for money is someone emailed me asking, saying they would pay $7,000 if I mailed them a jar of my pee. What? And I said no. You said no? In hindsight, I like 100% should have done it. But really? I, I was like, oh, I have I have principles. I can't do it. Is it? Can you? Is it legal to mail pee? I don't know. It has to be a health hazard. I mean, if you pee's wrap it up cleanest. in a lot of bubble wrap. Look what out there. I don't think pee is clean. Can you mail pee? Well, if you drink a lot of water. It is clean. <laughs> Whoa. Bear Grylls used to drink his own pee when he would be in the wild. Your body's like a natural Brita filter. Right. Okay. Okay. Is there like a freaky eaters or a My Strange Addiction, a woman would drink her own pee? Yeah. And there's another one about a woman who drank yes. blood. 
If the blood you'd like to mail is pathogen free, the United States Postal Service is happy to transport it by ground or air. Same goes for saliva, urine, and stool. Okay. So you can mail shit as oh, long as it's pathogen free. I've mailed. Shit. Yeah, a lot of people have. <laughs> well, for stool samples, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've done that. So I could just say I probably could have said that it's a urine sample. Yeah. Well, it is. Well, good to know. If anyone wants well, my pee now, yeah. I'm in a whole other mindset. You just have jars of it at <laughs> you your just house. Have jars of it. <laughs> Melissa, who are our Patreon shout outs? We've got Jim L, Joran C, Mark, and Jenna M. Welcome. Melissa, our weird thing of the week, you said in the group chat that you have an airport story that you need to tell us. Okay. Okay. So have you ever seen those shows called Locked Up Abroad? Yes. Or like Drugs Inc. Were there like airport shows where they just try to get people who are transporting drugs yes. illegally? So I was I went to Tahiti a week ago for a vacation and I went to the LAX International Airport and while waiting in line, it was a really long line, I said to my husband, Martin, I was like, you know what my dream would be is if I got like someone took me back and like check my bag and like I got like they just thought I had drugs in me. Oh, and, no. Like <laughs> that's like my dream. Like just to have weird shit yeah. like that happen. Like yeah. I would love to like experience story. that. So we're waiting in line and they have this new security thing that I've never seen before in the airport where they have there's everyone's in two lines, two single file lines, and they have the space of like 100 feet that's empty. And they have two people that you walk next to each other. You just walk down the space and they have a German shepherd <gasps> with like with, with a couple of police officers. And so you do it like one by one. Yeah. So I. It was Martin was standing behind me like I went up and this guy in the other line was next to me. He was just he just had a backpack on and we had to wait for the other people to finish. And the the, the TSA guy was like, OK, go for it. And then I started walking. And then the guy who was walking next to me, he kind of like nudged me. He's like, let's go. And was like walking fast. And I was like trying to walk fast, to keep up with him. I was like, well, what's going on? And then the, the German shepherd started jumping on him <gasps> and like barking stop it and <laughs> did he look like a normal guy like would you ever like... no he looked like a nor he was by himself he had a backpack on and so oh god i like was walking and then like i kind of looked back and like i looked at martin i just was like huh like shrugged and then the police officers were like keep walking ma'am and i was like huh and so like i started walking to like where the next like oh my god thing and so and i was looking back i was like what the fuck happened they asked her like well should we check her again and, like to me and they're like no no she's fine and i was like uh, uh. Holy and so shit. i started walking to the next station or whatever and apparently that guy was a plant to test the dog oh so really? he had drugs on him but as like you know to make sure the dog was doing the the right job oh my and god. i was like paired with him i was like you've got to oh be my kidding god me. and then like martin came up next i was like did you just see? He's like, yeah, that was fucking nuts. How did you find out that he was a plant? They didn't detain him. Oh, they didn't? That he just ended up being like, he was, he was a part of, there. yeah, he was working there. Holy fucking but shit. But why did he say the let's go to you? Like, I, it why was, was weird. He... I don't know why he did that. Like, he was just like, let's go. Like, kind of nudge me. And I was like, what? And so he's walking really fast. And so like, I was walking fast. I was like, this is weird. I don't, I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, this is why is this flirting with you also? I don't know. But then, oh no, on my way back in the Tahiti airport, so I got my boarding pass printed out and it had a bunch of S's on it with like, and then they circled it with like red marker. And like Martin didn't have anything on his. And he's like, oh, I think it means like security. I was like, huh, that's weird. So I go through the metal detector in Tahiti and it's like a very small, shitty airport. Yeah. They take me, they look at my boarding pass. They're like, okay, come with us. And, like, I have to pick up all my, my suitcase and my bag. They walk me, like, behind the metal detectors around a corner into this room, and they shut the door. What? And I'm like, what is happening? Oh, my God. And they I have to open up my bag. They're asking me all these questions. Like what? Who are you traveling with? Are you carrying any drugs? Do you, do, did someone put something in your bag? Can we see the bottom of your shoes? Can you take off your feet? Can you, like, Can you take, take off, off your, your feet? feet? You're like, no, I take off your shoes. <laughs> I can't take off my feet. They swab everything. There's like three dudes in there, like all like asking me questions. 
And then they swab everything. And just like, okay, you're free to go. And I was like, okay. I would have been so terrified in that situation. And like Martin didn't know where I went because he, they took me and like he was going through the metal detector and I was looking at him. I was trying to get his attention, yeah. but like I didn't want to yell. Right. But he like didn't see it. So, was he so scared? But yeah, for, I like walked back out there and like I tried to find him and he was like, some, he's like, where were you? I was like, I was detained. <laughs> It was like fucking locked up abroad. It happened Holy twice. Shit. Did they find the drugs though? No, they did not. I had them up my <laughs> vagina. Up your, <laughs> up your but that's. Fu- I was like, I'm flagged. I'm flagged because of the podcast. <laughs> I wonder if you are. That's crazy. That's insane. That's nothing like that has ever happened. No, to me. and it's weird that I, you know, be careful what you wish for. Ain't that the truth? I was. I was once. Um, I was coming back from sweden and norwegian air was were being real i'm, I'm just gonna put it out there they were being real dicks uh-huh. but you all, they also charge 50 dollars for a flight exactly so. but <laughs> they were just like not telling uh they were like the flight's delayed but we're not gonna tell you like what time we think it's I gonna take off that. so you should just get here at the time that you're supposed to get here but it's going to be delayed like oh. it, it was this weird thing of like well i'm not gonna get there like six hours before i'm sorry yeah, yeah. so but no one would answer my call so i tweeted at them as you do or as I'm just, you do as and i was just like hey can somebody please at norwegian air blah 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 get back to me well that flagged me as like disgruntled oh, passenger oh no <laughs> So when <laughs> oh no, <laughs> so then they thought I had some vendetta, I guess, uh-huh. because then I got to the airport and they brought me not into a room, uh-huh. but they had like a special list of like s- people where then they like asked me all these questions. Like at the gate, they called my name and they like brought me to the side and they were like, they just like double checked me security wise. No. And what? I was like, this is this cannot be random. This has to be that yeah. they. I love that for you. Wow. Disgruntled passenger. Disgrus- <laughs> disgruntled passenger <laughs> ex. Crazy. Maria. I'm look, you're never going to find a more um, non disgruntled passenger than me. I'm just there to get to where I'm going, guys. Yeah. Quickest, quickest, quickest way to get from A to B. And I'm a great I'm a great person to to sit on a plane next to. Me too, because I don't move. I don't make noise. Mm-hmm. I don't get up to go to the bathroom because I don't want to disturb anyone. You can use my anti-viral um, uh, <laughs> uh, wipes that I have. Yeah. I never I never want anything to drink or eat. Me either. Me I sleep neither. the entire time. Maybe I'll get up to pee twice. I swear to you, I do not need a ginger ale. So oh, I don't need a ginger ale no. either. So like, I buy water before I get on the plane, I so buy, I don't have to. I buy my food. I buy, I buy snacks. my snacks. I buy my water. Yep. What do you guys think about people who bring on like McDonald's onto the plane? That's insane. I think that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes the whole plane. It's horrible. Smell. Yes. It's that 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 should be flagged. It should be <laughs> that or. A- I saw a hard-boiled egg once. What are people doing? What are you even doing? Also, don't take your shoes off. Well, no. If you're wearing socks. If you're wearing socks, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are too many people in this world who take off their shoes and socks to fly. I was surrounded by them. It's on my flight so, so weird. Ra- it's well when it's crazy. Tahiti or Hawaii or anything like that like when we went I- island to island in Hawaii no one had shoes on well because there's an aloha vibe yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine <laughs> yeah unless you can take your whole sh- shoes and socks off if you have a shirt that says aloha, aloha. <laughs> <laughs> locals only <laughs> if you have a locals only shirt on then you don't have to wear shirts, shoes whatever you shoes, want no service <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, should we get into our topic of the day? Sure. Okay. Today, our topic is going to be the Long Beach musical theater double murderer who is now on death row, Dan Wozniak. It just so happens Amanda, our producer at Erios, knows him. Mm -hmm. Was she an accomplice? We'll be interviewing her later in the show. Let's Let's find find out. out. It was back in 2010 that Wozniak lured his Costa Mesa neighbor Sam Kerr to a Los Alamitos theater, murdered and dismembered him. In the hours between the murders, Wozniak performed in a local production of Nine. A former Disneyland princess is found guilty of covering up a depraved double murder committed by her fiance. It is the order of this court that you shall suffer the death penalty. Money and insanity. Money and insanity. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
In May 2010, Dan Wozniak, a 26-year-old community theater actor in Orange County, was planning on marrying his girlfriend, an actress and Disney princess, Rachel Buffett, on May 28th. But he was in serious debt, didn't have a full-time job, and he and Rachel were about to be evicted from their apartment. Dan's neighbor and friend Sam Hare had just returned from Afghanistan, and he had about 62000 saved from his service. Dan knew this, and he really wanted that money to pay for his wedding and his honeymoon. On May 21st, Dan lured Sam to an attic at the Los Alamitos Joint Forces Base. He said he needed help moving equipment. When Sam arrived, he shot him twice and took his phone and wallet. Dan then texted Sam's friend, Julie Kibushi, on Sam's cell phone, pretending to be Sam, and asked her to come over to Sam's apartment. Dan was there waiting when she got there, and then he shot and killed Julie and tried to stage the murder as if Sam killed her. He wanted the police to think that Sam sexually assaulted and then killed Julie. That night, after he killed two people, Dan starred in a musical theater production of Nine at the Hunger Artist Theater Company in Fullerton. The musical Nine was made into a weird movie produced by Harvey Weinstein. Oh, God. I don't know if you remember this. I saw it. I don't. Oh, my God. It was so weird. It's with Daniel Day-Lewis, Marion Cotillard, Penelope Cruz, Judi Dench, Nicole Kidman... Sophia Loren, Kate Hudson. Holy shit. And Fergie. And Fergie. <laughs> it's like the weirdest musical movie of all time. I've never heard of it or seen it's it. It's very like Chicago-esque, but oh. bizarre and also a, a horrible, weird mishmash cast. I'm into it. Yeah. So after the play, he went back to where Sam's body was and cut off his head and hands and buried them in a park. Sam was really close with his parents, and when they didn't hear from him and couldn't get a hold of him, his dad went to his apartment. There, he found the body of Julie. She had writing scrawled across her body in black marker. It read, all yours, fuck you. Sam's dad then called the police. That's insane. Yeah. So the police then learned something interesting about Sam. When he was 18, he had been charged with murder. What? So he used to be in gangs, and he was arrested with 23 other gang members for a a retribution killing. And then he was eventually acquitted of the crime. Mm. But if you're a police officer and you see this on his record, that's a huge red flag. Right. So the police initially thought that Sam had killed Julie and then they launched a manhunt Which for is Sam. Which Dan had wanted. Yeah. So some background on Julie, who was murdered. She was 23. She was friends with Sam. She was a fellow student and she was also his tutor. The night she died, she was at dinner with her brother when she received the text to come over to Sam's. When she got there... She texted her brother at midnight that she had made it there and was safe. Unfortunately, that was not the case. When the police looked at her phone, they saw tons of texts from Sam begging her to come over, saying that he was really hurting and really sad, which was obviously Dan Dan. pretending to be Sam. Weird. Yeah. While the police were searching for Sam, Dan hired a 16-year-old to withdraw money from Sam's bank account. The police were tracking Sam's bank activity, and there was a withdrawal. They looked at the ATM footage and saw a 16-year-old who they then located. The 16-year-old told them that it was Dan who hired him to withdraw the money. The police found Dan at a restaurant for his bachelor party and brought him in for questioning. That was, he like, that's so stupid. Yeah. He wouldn't, he should have, I mean, I don't know how he would tell the 16-year-old not to tell, I mean, he could have, he should have known that that was going to happen. Yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah. The police actually didn't suspect Dan of murder at this point. They just wanted to know why he had Sam's ATM card. So, of course, Dan was panicking and thought they knew everything. He spent hours lying to the police, but his story kept changing. He said that he and Sam were involved in a plan to scam Sam's bank. They were going to report Sam's card stolen, but then Sam backed out. Dan said that Sam freaked out and told him that Julie was dead in his apartment. The police were getting very suspicious at this point and asked Dan for a DNA sample. So Dan then admitted, yeah, I was there. 
because he knew his DNA was going to show up. He said he helped Sam with his getaway. He dropped him off in Long Beach. And by the way, Dan never asked for a lawyer. Yeah. That's a huge mistake. Big mistake. What are you doing? You always ask for a lawyer. I wonder if he thought that would make him... Seem guilty. Seem guilty, yes. No, you never talk and you always ask for a lawyer. Just get a lawyer. Just get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Uh, He eventually says, I saw the goddamn body. Is that what you want to hear? I was right over the body. I didn't touch her. I saw two gunshots in her head. The police told him the body was in a position where you couldn't see how many gunshots Mm -hmm. there were. So... How did Dan know that there were two? The police let Dan make a call to Rachel because he gets his one like custody call. That's his fiance? Yes. Okay. Rachel, his fiance, Rachel Buffett, she tells Dan that Dan's brother Tim has a backpack full of incriminating evidence, including the gun. Oh, shit. So Dan begs Rachel to not tell anyone because if they find out, he said, I'm doomed. Well, yeah. And he didn't realize if you make a call from jail, it's recorded. So they have this call. Yeah. Haven't they ever watched Love After Lockup? It's up? crazy. Everything's recorded. <laughs> yeah. Always ask watched? for a lawyer. Everything's bugged. Yeah. So the police eventually find the backpack. It's full of shell casing, Sam's ID, Sam's credit card, just all of this incriminating information. So then Dan is brought into questioning again. And the police present him with all this new evidence, and he finally admits to the murder. Mm. He says, I'm crazy, and I did it. He went from crying to laughing hysterically, oh my God. which I think he was maybe doing on purpose to like make it seem like he's insane or something. He watches the Joker movie once. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a theater actor. <laughs> he took the police to the body and where he had buried the head and hands, which is in the El Dorado Nature Center in Long Beach. Oh, my God. So his plan was to make it look like Sam had killed Julie, but did not work. So at his trial, they showed his Google searches, which are (laughs) making sure a body is not found is one of them. No. Head gunshot. Stop. How to hide a body. (laughs) And quick ways to kill people. You've got to be fucking kidding me. This fucking guy. Well, my last Google search (laughs) is can you mail pee? So So if I end up in the clink, I hope they really check my (laughs) search history. So Dan was convicted on two counts of first degree murder, and he was sentenced to death in September 2016. He's currently in San Quentin State Prison. Shit. Well, then it gets even crazier. Uh Wozniak's then fiance Rachel Buffett gets arrested. Uh Oh. In November 2012, Rachel's arrested. She was questioned and claimed she had no idea about the whole Mm -hmm. thing. She left out key details from the day of the murders. After three weeks, she was released on bail. In 2013, she went on Dr. Phil, claiming that she knew nothing about the whole incident, and Dan wasn't the person that she thought she knew. I have a couple of clips from oh my God, yes, please. those Dr. Phil episodes. They're great. So this is one. Isn't Dr. Phil, like, not a doctor? The wedding date was set for May 28th, 2010. It was going to be a beachside wedding with a reception overlooking the water. On the night of Dan's bachelor party, two days before the wedding, he was arrested. I didn't know what to think. I was in shock. And my first response was, oh my gosh, what trouble could this idiot have gotten himself into now? And is he going to be out in time for the dress rehearsal tomorrow? (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Sure. Sure, that's what you thought. And then there's another one where Dr. Phil is talking to her. This third party. So the point is, he fessed up that there wasn't a third party, but yet you describe a third party. Mm -hmm. So how could that be? You have a wife, right? I do. A beautiful wife. Thank you. If your wife told you that she had just made a cup uh, or a pot of coffee and it was in the kitchen and then you didn't see it, but later on somehow it became really important whether or not it was there and a cop asked you um, what was in your kitchen, you'd say, oh, a spatula, a fork, and a pot of coffee. I trusted him and I trusted that what he said was true. And especially before I thought it really mattered, I didn't question it. 
And then later on in questioning, when the police asked me, well, did you actually see him? And I said, well, no, no, I didn't. I got to tell you, that sounded like a really coached response. I want to know what you have to say about it, not what you worked out in a conference room with your lawyer to say about it. Damn, Damn, Phil. Phil She's like the truth. She's like blonde and like pretty and like very like. Very actory. <laughs> well, they're a musical theater couple. Right. That's wild. Yeah. Well, her lies couldn't last for long, and they couldn't get past Dr. Phil. She was eventually charged with three felony accounts of being an accessory. In November 2018, she was convicted and sentenced to 32 months. With probation, time served, and good conduct, she expects to serve between one to two years in the Orange County Jail. At her sentencing, she read the following statement. I hope my silence has not been misinterpreted or as callous. I wish I could have saved them. I wish I'd never met Dan Wozniak. Someone posted a screenshot of her inmate status on Facebook. And as of October 1st, she was released. Yeah, I found it on this Dan Wozniak Facebook page. Wow. So recently she just got out of the plank. So she only served less than a year. Hardly any time. Yeah. So she wonder what she's doing. We need to find her. We're, yeah, I tried to find. I mean, she's not on she's anything. Not on, yeah, I would imagine she's probably taking some time off social media. Yeah. So, oh, so when I was so when I was researching all of this, I came across a website called Daniel Wozniak is my friend dot com. Did you like my website? <laughs> <laughs> she. It's this woman. Her name is Glenn Way. She's in her forties or fifties. She's married and has two kids. She talks about Dan. Like her whole blog is devoted to Dan. Her first post was January 2015. I'm going to read it. It says, I have a new friend. Actually, I met him for the first time in 2010, but he really only became my actual friend until a few months ago when I first wrote him a letter. He is in jail. He's awaiting trial. He's been waiting a long time too. Four years and seven months. My friend is being charged with special circumstances so he can't get bail and the prosecutor is asking for the death penalty. She calls him Pat here before she started using his actual name. She says, when I first met Pat back in 2010, he was acting in a play at my theater. Oh, I wonder if Amanda knows her. Oh, my God. I bet Amanda does. We We have have to to ask ask her. her. Jinx. Jinx. (laughs) I'm calling it my theater because I was one of the people who helped with my with the day to day running of the place. Oh, my God. I was a company member and director. Amanda totally knows her. Wait, did Amanda do plays at the theater? No, she did plays at her high school with him. She went to high school with him. Oh, oh God, I God. can't wait to talk to her. Have okay. they ever kissed? Oh, oh kissing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said Gross. here. <laughs> uh, she continues, Pat was just around for one show. Even though he was the lead actor in a musical running at the theater, it was Pat's first time acting there. I didn't think he was the greatest actor in the world, but he was doing a good job. He seemed like a nice guy. He was good looking and personable. He was funny and polite. He was even engaged to one of the actresses in the show, which Mm. is Rachel. And they were getting married the next week. He seemed like he had his life pretty organized. A few days late, a few days after the show ended, Pat was arrested. He was at a restaurant having an impromptu bachelor party with some of his buddies. The sheriff swarmed in and arrested him just as he'd finished paying the check. A fact that annoys him a bit is what she wrote. I'm sure that he's fine without having to pay that check. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. This yes. website is crazy. It's really nuts. There's a section called Slammer Slang, and it's words that that Dan taught her about jail. The first one is Selly, a person who shares your cell, a cell roommate. Fish, new prisoners who have just entered the system. Fish. Green light to be marked for death by oh, other prisoners. Oh, God. High class to describe someone who has hepatitis C. High class? High class. J cat, an inmate who is out of control, idiotic, or does stupid things. A okay. J cat. A J cat. Dang. So she, re- I went through this blog. I spent a, a good few hours. Going through it because she it's been around four uh, or four years that she's been writing this blog and she's been writing letters back and forth to Dan. She was going to visit him. I'm pretty sure she was in love with him. Oh, 100%. It was it got to the point where like she 
was talking about how he asked to, for her to send him a picture and she wrote, she's like, well, I, you know, I wanted to find like a cute picture. I was trying to take selfies, like talking about how she was trying to find a cute picture of herself to send him. Girl. It's. It, it says she, she's going to write a book about it. Yeah. She's currently writing a book. I don't know if it's out yet or what. It also gives the address where you can write him if you want. Yeah. Which we probably shouldn't do. Um, In February 2015, she wrote, she wrote a poem about why she wrote him in prison. She oh. says, I won't deny it. This guy is fascinating. I wanted to know more. I wanted to understand. So I have this possibly unhealthy obsession with crimes and killers and bam, here's a possible killer who I've actually met. Oh She's God. so excited. So he wrote back to her right away. She said that she was giddy with excitement just seeing the red inmate correspondence stamp on the front. Oh my God. She said his handwriting is very neat. He thanked her for writing and asked why she wrote to him. He talked about depression and his suicide attempt before he was arrested, and he asked her to send him a photo of herself. She said, I immediately went looking for pictures of me where I look cute. Duh. The second letter she got back from him, she said he told her he remembered her and that she was nice. She wrote, I'm a nice person, but being remembered as hot would be good, too. Oh, this girl wants it back. Yeah. He also sent her a drawing. Oh, that's embarrassing. I wrote in um, my uh, diary once as a as a um, like a 10 year old or maybe I was like 12. But it's just like me kind of talking about how no one thinks I'm, you know, pretty or whatever, but they all think I'm cute. And then in capital letters, I went and I went, I want to be hot, not cute. So okay. how did you, it's like cute, pretty, hot, beautiful, gorgeous. I don't think hot's underneath beautiful. No, I do. I don't think they're ranked. I think they're oh, just I thought all you were different. saying them in like the. <laughs> I, thought, like, I was like, is that that's kind of a good ranking? No, I think they're all just very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. and it, so I get it. I don't think that hot is a good one though. Uh, yeah, because I, I think you can be ugly and also hot. Yeah, mm, like a butter, like a butterface. No, I just think hot means you have sex appeal. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? True. <laughs> <Nothing. laughs> Maria's Maria's horny as usual. I'm just trying. I'm again. I'm just All saying. Horned up. I'm just saying. There's nothing wrong with being a hot girl. Find us no. on Twitch. <laughs> hot girls only on Twitch. Edu. Um, okay, so she also has this May 2015 post. She says, I haven't posted in a while. I've been going through a bit of an existential crisis. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, you're in love with a felon. (laughs) Yeah. Or a murderer, a double murderer. When I began writing to Dan, I had one goal in mind. I saw myself as the next Truman Capote. Cool. She went to his court dates for his sentencing. On one occasion, she wrote, Daniel was sitting with his lawyer and his back was to me. Oh, God. The tag was sticking up from his collar, and I wanted so much to walk right up to him and tuck it in. But I restrained myself. This is like jail fantasy porn. Jail rotica. Jail rotica. Oh, yeah. No, that, I, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be more into that, given well, how horny you are. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I just, I feel like it would have been better if it would have been something with an E. Like pen pen erotica like penitentiary penitenti- erotica then i would have gone i don't like that punch up well then i would have gone ally congratulations <laughs> you've done it you've done it <laughs> uh she talks about making eye contact with him and him smiling there was another hour of back and forth with the lawyers during that time i'm pretty sure daniel got a couple more glimpses in my direction when the trial ended daniel stood up and he made sure to look at me again oh. he smiled and winked. Uh, I think he mouthed something about trying to call me later. No, he didn't. Girl, you a freak. That's crazy. This is so weird. Her first visit was for three hours. Uh, she said there was a lot of laughing and that they have inside jokes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, how many... Never mind. <laughs> she, <laughs> she has a post called Danielisms, and it's all about his personality and things he likes. Oh, God. When he was transferred to San Quentin, she drove eight hours to see him. She got her picture taken with him there. You can see it on the website. She talked to him for five hours on Saturday and a Sunday. And Melissa Googled her. She's married. She has two kids. Oh, my God. She's married to this artist called Shag. Have you heard of Shag, Maria? 
You've probably driven by this store on Melrose. I'll show you the storefront. Does this look familiar? Um, it's on, or it's probably on like Third or Melrose, wherever the store. I've definitely is. driven past it. Shag store on Melrose. He's an artist. He makes these like what do you call them? Like low brow seventies kind of art. It looks like the Jetson style art. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it looks like a free computer background. Yes, very much. It's like very like Palm Springs. Yeah, very like fake. Los Am- Los Angeles imagery and like oh tiki my God. stuff. It's right next. This is why I recognize it. It's right next to where I used to get my eyelashes done. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. Ew. Yeah. So she's married to this guy. All while she's having this weird affair with Dan Wozniak. Oh, my God. Did you look at this picture of her husband? Yeah, I saw it. Um, <laughs> Which one? Oh, God. He looks like Guy Fieri. He does look like... He looks like Guy Fieri meets hipster artist. This is a... Yeah. They're a bad couple. Do you think he knows that she's got this? Of course. It's probably a weird She fetish. has this blog. So he's probably always at the shag store. Yeah. He doesn't know what she does. That's probably why she's talking to Dan because he's in his he's got his head in his his pens. No, I <laughs> head in his He's pens. always looking down at his drawing board. Yeah, he doesn't have no, time for I her. No, I think that based on what he looks like, I think that this is a weird horny thing that they do. Do you think they they're swingers too, uh, probably? I think oh, they're 100% yes. swingers. I think that they get off on her writing a convict. Oh, they have they a kid. The le- they have two kids who are like college aged, I think. Oh, so they're like the kids are out of the house. We can do what we want. Oh, yeah. Like mommy and dad can get freaky again. Mm-hmm. So Dan also has a brother named Tim Wozniak. This is from the OC Register in 2017. Tim Wozniak, age 42, has been on probation since December when he pleaded guilty to being an accessory after the fact for helping his younger brother, Daniel Wozniak, by hiding his backpack full of evidence. Yep. So Tim Wozniak testified against his brother in the trial and as part of a plea argument, was ordered to serve three years of probation and time in a drug treatment program. He was apparently into meth. Well, that's what happens. Yep. Authorities issued a warrant for his arrest in February after he allegedly, oh shit, walked away from the rehab facility. Yep. Like, imagine that not being your rock bottom. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy. Damn. What is this hot air balloon brothers? So when we were have? so when we were texting with Amanda about this, she's like, I think one of the brothers tried to kill their parents like in a hot air balloon or something. So I looked it up. Oh my god. And there's a comment on Daniel Wozniak is my friend.com <laughs> where someone says Dan got the gun when he and his brothers sent their parents on a hot air balloon ride for their anniversary. So Dan was banned from the Wozniak home for repeated thefts. So oh, he wasn't allowed shit. in the house. So he needed to get into the house to get the gun. So the three Wozniak boys, he has, they have another brother apparently, conspired to kill their parents for money. Oh my God, like Menendez. Yeah. Tim was in his parents' house when the parents were gone on the hot air balloon ride. So he let Dan into the house and showed him where the gun was. So Dan stole the gun and he kept it. But the, apparently the boys never figured out how to kill their parents jesus these kids are crazy yeah and the wozniak's the oldest son mike he was home during dan's trial and after the jury recommended death for dan mike got into a fight with their dad and he beat him so severely that he died of his injuries stop it yeah so no charges were filed against mike what? Why? Presumably, presumably because injuries started as a fight and Daryl had some health conditions that contributed to his death. That which seems, seems incorrect. crazy. Seems incorrect. It does seem incorrect. Doesn't that seem incorrect? Yeah. It seems incorrect. Like you mean Melissa did bad research? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Melissa, I, that, that seems wrong He was to never, me. I looked... <laughs> Well, no, it seems like you should be arrested for I that. I know. I don't know. I tried to find more info on it. I could not find anything. That feels like a weird loophole. Like, yeah. oh, but they have a pre-existing condition well, and that's why they Well, cancer is going to die anyway. Right? Like, that doesn't so I seem punched right. Punched him in the face. They, there's someone on the inside of this case. There's someone on the inside. There's someone on the inside. Is is one of them a cop? Uh, no. 
I mean, that's why. <laughs> so th- this last thing. And then a crazy thing. So this there's a sleuth podcast yeah. that was doing uh, the Daniel Wozniak case, I think like a year ago or so. But before the woman finished the podcast, she died. Oh, no. Her name was Linda Sawyer. She died of like, it was like a routine surgery or something. I I don't know. Was a Wozniak brother doing a surgery? I don't know. Was one of them a doctor? Maria, are we going to die? Well, I'm not because I I don't have anything (laughs) to do with this episode. Okay. Well, you're here. You're an accessory. You're going to get three years in prison and only serve one. Holy shit. This is crazy. We, so we... We got to talk to Amanda because she says she has a lot to say about yeah, this. Let's get Amanda on so the horn. Okay. Get her on the horn. Okay, so we're here with Amanda Lund, who's one of the Erios producers and creators of Erios. Yes. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Allie. Hi, Melissa. I'm so happy to be talking with you guys. Uh, we're excited to be talking with you too because you know a murderer. It's crazy, but I do. Like, I knew him very well. What? what? So we just went through and we told the story of Dan Wozniak and what, like, what details do you, what, what was Dan like? How do you know him? Did you do theater with him? Yeah. So I um, grew up in Southern California in Long Beach and I went to high school um, at Los Alamitos High and I was a theater nerd. So I was... Hot. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Allie. I took th- I was in theater classes and I was very involved doing plays and Dan Wozniak was two years older than me but he was also super involved in the theater department so I think my um my sophomore year I acted in a play with him and oh then my God. yes what play? And it was a murder mystery Ooh. it was Stop it. called arsenic and old lace what Yeah, and so I was the female lead in it, and ironically, Dan, I believe, I have to refresh myself on the play, but I think he played a detective, but I think he was actually the murderer. (gasps) This is where he got his inspiration. After he graduated, he came back and then directed me also in a play. (gasps) What was he like as a director? I mean, what I remember is he was a a good director. I mean, he was definitely really into what he was doing. But the thing about Dan is, is that he was, when I heard what happened, and this was a couple of years out of high school, I was, of course, shocked. And then like three seconds later, I was kind of like, well... Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, if if someone came to me and said Melissa or Allie murdered two people, I would be blown away. And there's no way I could even wrap my head around that. Like, but there would be a part of you that'd be like, well, (laughs) Melissa. There were some red flags. Maybe, maybe in self defense or like, it just depends on the situation. But with Dan, there was something about him that is off. Oh, weird. Did you know his girlfriend or fiance? I didn't know her, but I I have mutual friends because she was a princess at Disneyland. Right, and you were too. Yes. What? Yeah, you didn't know she you were Cinderella, right? Uh, yeah, and Ariel and Sleeping Beauty. Amanda, I did not know this. <laughs> Sorry to drop a bomb. Wow. <laughs> this is incredible news. <laughs> That's crazy. (laughs) Did you know Dan's brothers too? Yes, not well, but like I had been to Dan's house and I had (gasps) like met his family. We had done a short film together once. So I mean, our relationship was that like I would see him like not all the time, but every once in a while, like on a weekend, like we we weren't friends. We were definitely in different social circles. But because of the theater community, you know, every once in a while there would be like a project or like we were definitely um, like knew each other well. And then, I, you know, obviously I didn't stay in contact with him after high school. But about a week before the, he got arrested, I bumped into him out at a <gasps> bar in Long Beach. Whoa, 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 wait. A week before he got arrested or a week before he committed the murder? I'm not sure on the timeline. All I know is it was like he was telling us about his bachelor party that was about to happen. And that's when okay. he got arrested at the bachelor party. Yes. Amanda, you can't see it, but Allie is clutching her pearls <laughs> with yes. both hands. 
I she know. Is crazy. It's crazy. She's it's so getting the crazy. vapors. Yeah, she's getting. She's got the vapors. <laughs> she had to lie down on the shay. <laughs> I, so I think. Oh when my I saw god! Him, Where did you bump into like, him? At a bar, a dive bar in Long Beach. It was either Alex's bar or it was some some dive in Long Beach. Oh. I was just at bar hopping with my high school friends who I'm still really close to. And we all know Dan. Oh. I thought it was at the place Elisa worked at um, at that place. Oh, so he, I believe his bachelor party, was that at um, BBC? It might have been. Yeah, we, we saw. Okay, this is the thing. We bumped into him at the Belmont Brewing Company where my friend Elisa worked. And then we went out bar hopping after dinner and bumped into him again at one of the bars. Stop oh. it. This is insane. He was probably in the stages of planning yeah, on he was planning doing a murder. this, on getting all that money from Sam and murdering them. He was he was contemplating murdering. Yeah, you saw someone with murder on the mind. Did you, do you, Amanda, do you think, and this is a serious question, do you think seeing you sent him to kill <laughs> those people? <laughs> you know, knowing myself at the time, I probably said something. You know, I, I'm sure wow. I had a, a couple of Manhattans or whatever drink I thought was cool. I'm sure there was a then. do what you need to do, Dan. Like one of those things he'd tell you about his problems. And you're going, you know what, Dan, you just do what you need to do. Everyone deserves to be happy, yeah. you know. I probably said, where are you going on your honeymoon? <laughs> oh. He never thought about it before. Jail. That's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to afford that? He sent him over the edge. <laughs> You're going to need a lot of money for that. <laughs> Is there photographic evidence of you two together? Like, are there photos or videos of you two? Yes. I have um, a very <sighs> chilling photo of us together that I can. Um, it's framed in your <laughs> office. <laughs> no. Weird. I can send to you guys, but um, it. What I know that you've all you've just gone over this, but what Dan did was like it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, yeah. when I when I first heard about it, I remember going. Of course, I went straight to Facebook to like look at his page, look like try to figure out what was going on, and I just saw our theater teacher, who was this wonderful woman who we were really all very close with, and she was super maternal. She just posted on the someone had posted the article, and she just wrote a comment that said, "Oh, Dan, why?" <gasps> oh, oh my god! Oh god! That's and sad. Everyone who knew him was just devastated yeah oh god Uh, how awful there's a couple of things like he was just like he's an interesting guy and he was one of those people who was so friendly and so confident and just had this like he's got this like big sort of moon pie face and this big happy smile um but one of those people who you can't quite put your finger on like you know in high school when there'd be certain people who kind of dressed like they were wearing their parents clothes yeah like they he wasn't a normal teenager like he was wearing like dad jeans and he always had a hawaiian shirt on and like a leather jacket but not a cool leather jacket like a dad leather jacket oh interesting um weird he, he was like the most effusively happy guy wow what a bizarre personality type we also learned that his brother ended up getting in a fight and murdering his dad or injuring his dad yeah. so badly that he passed away. I heard about that, and I believe that was during the trial. And did yes. you guys look into the the plot that the brothers had to murder the parents? Well, yeah, there's not there's a comment posted on this blog called Daniel Wozniak is my friend. It's this woman who has spent the past five years writing to Dan, but there's a comment on there where someone says they wanted to get the parents a hot air balloon ride so they would be out of the house for the weekend so Dan could go to the house to get the gun. That's what someone said. Right. I I had heard that the plan was to get them a hot air balloon ride and then shoot the balloon probably I mean, or something so what yeah, kind of idea is that <laughs> a great idea that's what that is <laughs> the craziest idea i've ever heard but there this this person who commented said that the parents or said that the kids had been plotting to kill the parents yeah and which, which is, is some crazy so obviously there was e- either it's genetic or it was such a dysfunctional family that it just the kids got mentally messed up i, I really also i read that Tim, the one of the brothers, was on meth, and he was like, 
has been arrested for drugs. So that might have, have had something to do with it, too. I often wonder if Dan was on meth or some sort of drug or if he's just a psychopath. What do you guys think? I don't know. I mean, when you said the thing about the parents, that was interesting because all the brothers t- seem to have been a little bit. Yeah, unhinged. they seem a little off. Was there were the what were the parents like? You know, I I have a very fuzzy memory. I think I only met the dad, um, but I just remember kind of going to their house in high school, and it was just a little bit weird, you know, like a little bit not like my house or my friend's house and not yeah. because of like income level or anything. It was like a nice middle class house, but just like it just felt like it was out of the 70s or something, you mm. know, and then I just remember the dad being like just like a normal guy. Like he seemed like maybe one of my uncles that I see at Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. Uncle vibe is uncle, uncle vibe. vibe. Yeah. Did you know this woman who has a website, Daniel Wozniak is my friend. Her name is Glenn Glendella Way. No. She said she had worked at the theater where Dan had performed his last. Okay. So he, would you guys know the name of the theater? It was like a, di- a, um, a dinner theater, I think. Hunger Artists Theater Company in Fullerton. Yeah. Step. Okay. The step All right. Theater. Okay. So yeah, no, I don't. I, I'm not familiar with that. That's where he had his last performance. I, I know. And he was the type of guy, like, I, I'm an actor, but I've never been an actory actor. You know, I'm just like, I'm into it to an extent. But he You're was not a those... method actor. Not at, not at all. <laughs> um, no, but I think what you're describing isn't an actory actor. It's it's just um like a like a fake actor, a factor. <laughs> like, just... you know, one of those people that play like like. I love to act. Only talks about acting. Yes. He but was not like that good. so into it. And like he had a certain level of charisma. Like he had this confidence where he would have stage presence and he was technically like pretty good. But it was always that thing of like, he's good, but I, I there's something there's just was something a little bit off where like, for for instance, like. One time we were waiting in line at the school fair, um, at our old elementary school fair, which kind of like everyone from the community would go to. And we were all in line for the monkey cages. Okay, and- what? <laughs> you know the- what are you talking about? You know the, you monkey, know the cages? monkey cages? No. no what is that? It's basically like a, a kind of a th- skinny Ferris wheel, but you're inside a, a cage. Like the Ferris wheels are caged, and so they swing back and they swing back and forth. So it's a little more thrilling than an average uh, Ferris wheel. Okay. I have no idea what that is. I've never. It's heard of like that. okay, they're all. It's a, it's completely enclosed, right, Amanda? Yes. And then you can kind of rock back and forth like a like a gondola or whatever. Or like a- absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I got a I got a picture up. Oh, okay. oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were waiting in line for like a like a a show and tell kind of thing with the monkeys and the I cages. thought you were like at a zoo. Yeah, and like monkeys. No, no, it wasn't anything like that. But me and my friend Johnny and a couple of our other friends were in line, and Dan was a little bit ahead of us, and they were kind of pairing you up two by two, so you would get put in with someone oh, no. not necessarily <gasps> from Amanda. Group. No, and no. let's just say that Johnny got put with Dan in the monkey cages, and he basically had to be dragged <laughs> kicking and screaming. And this is before <laughs> Dan ever did anything bad. What? Wait, it who had to be dragged kicking jo- and screaming? Johnny into the monkey cages because he was like, you know, didn't want to be in the monkey cages with Dan. Oh, my oh. God. And what happened in the monkey cages? No, nothing. It was, did- total, it was totally fine. And I have this, like, honestly, really weird feeling right now that Dan, I think he's a narcissist. And I think he probably Googles himself all the time. And if he's listening to this, like, how is he, how is he going to listen to this? People get uh, podcasts listen to- in jail, I think. You can? I don't... See- uh, do you think so? They have... They get the- on the internet. Yeah, if they can get MTV, they can get this. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, are we get- Are we okay? <laughs> You're okay. He's on death row. He's not getting out. I did watch that episode of Lockdown with him. Did you guys see that? No. Oh my God, no. We need to watch that. I watched Dateline about the case well there's an episode and this is before (gasps) i think it was before he was found guilty he's awaiting trial shit he's still claiming innocence and he's basically giving like a tour of his prison cell and like showing the sandwich that they give him for lunch and 
I believe I could have this slightly wrong, but I remember at the time when he talked about starring in Arsenic and Old Lace, he claimed to have this leading role in it, which he did not have unless he was in some other production. But my friend Johnny had the leading role in it. (laughs) <laughs> and so Johnny was upset that Dan was trying to say that he was the lead when Johnny was the lead. Oh, shit. We oh. need to get Johnny on the pod to <laughs> yeah. speak what his What was truth. that monkey cage ride like? <laughs> I but know. The, something oh, my God. Happened. They have a longstanding rivalry. Yeah. 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 Yes. But the thing about wow. him and on that show was he was still trying to soaking up this attention, even though now he yeah. was like getting the attention for murdering people. It was like he was still trying to project this image. It's so chilling to watch this episode. Well, it seems like that like he was like no matter how he was going to get famous, like he's he's do he's in the role of a lifetime, right? Now he's yep. now he's like this murderer that's in prison that's writing to to women and and showing off his cell and like it's like it's all performance. It's it's so frightening. Crazy. That's crazy. <sighs> Well, and, and tell them what your mom said, Amanda. Oh, no. What did she say? Oh, God. I just remember. Okay. So I was at home and this was maybe a couple of weeks after the, you know, the murder and the bodies had been discovered. And I came home and my mom was like, you know, I can't go on my walks anymore because your friends scattered all those body parts in El Dorado Park. Oh, oh my God. No. So where the place where he scattered Sam's remains um, was at a park literally across the street from my house, my childhood home. Shut oh, up. God. Oh, that's crazy. Amanda, do you know any... So did you know the the fiancé at all? I didn't know Rachel, but I know people who know her. And before anything ever came out about um, her involvement in this and, and sort of the discrepancies in her statements to the police, every person I knew who knew her, they just said she's absolutely in on this really oh, total i mean she was on dr phil she was on uh, and she just looks so guilty holy shit she just got out of prison apparently yeah in october i did and, and some people even think that she put him up to it like i obviously i have no oh. information on that but and i i'm always kind of like you know people are always kind of quick to say the woman was behind it you know like guys are just dupes who can't think for themselves like of course the woman was behind it i don't jump to that conclusion because i'm gonna try to just look at the facts but that was something that i heard from people who knew her the talk about town was like, there's no way Dan did this on his own. There's no way he thought of this. Oh. I mean, it seems it seems correct that that's yeah. something they probably did together so they could like go on their honeymoon well, and yeah, find their life Well, yeah, because they were together. like behind two months in rent. Yeah, and they, they were, were in a, in a lot spot. of debt and they didn't have any money to do anything. Holy shit. What princess did she play, Amanda? I'm not exactly sure. I, I think she was but probably... Depend- s- like on her weight and height, is how you told me that I would I could play Jane from Tarzan. Yeah, I think she was so. <laughs> Do you could girls you want to know what princess her? you'd play? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let, what color are your eyes, Melissa? Blue. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, they're blue. Okay, that's throwing me yeah. for a turd. Okay, they're like um, clear. Well, bluish green and teal. I, I know who Melissa would Melissa, play. Well, Melissa would play Princess Aurora. Who's Princess Aurora? Sleeping oh. Beauty. She'd put on a blonde wig and be Princess Aurora, huh? Yeah, because you're kind of like, you're have like a kind of like semi angular features. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take it. And Allie, your eyes are what? Hazel? Yeah, they're like gray, 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 green, blue. I know who I have. I have her too. You do. So, okay. So Uh I think, I do think Allie could be Belle. I wow. was going to say Megara. Oh, Allie could definitely be Megara, but that's kind of like more obscure. Well, that's what, I mean, if Allie worked there, she'd kind of bring out the obscure characters. <laughs> <laughs> lobby for that. I would lobby yeah. for <laughs> I don't know. I want to play an Aristocat. Sorry. 
And I wow. think Melissa could also play Mary Poppins, right, Amanda? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yes, probably, Mary Poppins. Uh, probably yeah. Alley too, really. A spoonful <laughs> of <laughs> sugar. <laughs> there you go. So I'm she could. So what do you think that you? Rachel could have been? I think Rachel was probably like Cinderella Ariel, but I I have a feeling that she was maybe in parades. I'm like, why did I not know her? Because I'm sure we were there at the same time um but i'm trying to google right now what princess oh she played rachel buffett she's on imdb and she played princess ariel and alice from alice okay so she's Mm. she's short is what that means (laughs) (laughs) yes she's not tall (laughs) yeah is there like a coveted princess that you want like that's the best princess to be um well, I I think it's like the classic is Cinderella, but mm-hmm. really it's like and they're all good. But Aurora's outfit kind of sucks. It's really hot because it's got those long sleeves. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she also worked as as a princess at medieval times. Wow. Oh. So what do you think of that, Amanda? Was that was that that's kind of lowbrow? Oh well, I you know probably she got paid more. To be honest. Really? Oh, wow, really? Yeah. At medieval times. Because Disney does not pay the the girls anything. Because you're not union. Oh, shit. Damn. I think you're probably union at um, medieval times. The princesses should unionize. Yeah. Watch what you say, Allie. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. That's true. Um, well, Amanda, any, any last snippets that you think the people the listeners need to know about dan wozniak or this case oh only that i think he's must have been a narcissist and i am so sickened by him and my thoughts go to the families well thank thank you you. thank you for joining us and what is your what is your erios podcast or where can people find you oh thank you yeah so um of course i host the big ones with producer maria of course yeah which is second to web crawlers the best podcast ever made (laughs) thank you and um i also just launched a podcast called the complete christmas which is a fiction podcast it's comedy with a bunch of improv and a bunch of amazing comedians um and it's basically a send up of 1960s self help for women. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like a housewife giving, uh, doing these self help industrials for women. And the new season's called The Complete Christmas. And uh, it's the Christmas Carol, but for 1960s housewives, where my character, Maribel, is visited by three appliances and they take her on a journey <laughs> through space and time. <laughs> Oh my god, amazing. There's two episodes out right now. I've just finished the appliance episode. That's it's perfect. Hilarious. Uh, so you. everyone tune into that. Thank you for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, thanks, thanks, ladies. Okay, thanks, you're doing Amanda. good work out there. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wow, that's crazy. I cannot believe she knew him that intimately. That is bananas. Yeah, so we have to get that picture of them together. Yeah, I wonder if she'll send it to us and let us put it on our Instagram. I mean, we've we've got to get that. We got to get it. Yeah, so what a horrible horrible tragedy that happened in our state to 1 degree from us. Yeah, we know someone we're 1 degree away from a murderer. Anyways, Melissa told me that you also Melissa, you know a murderer. Oh, I know a murderer. So oh. we can get into that. I don't want to get into it now. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's kind of a long story, but I know from my hometown. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, well I'll talk that about next, that next week. Next week. Yeah. Melissa, where can people find us online or on the internet? You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at webcrawlerspod. We're on Reddit. We have a Facebook group. We're on Patreon. And please leave comments, like and subscribe. Yes, please like and subscribe. Five stars. You can even say something simple like good. Like great. Great. Good. Wow. Maria. Maria. Yeah, just there was someone that just, that, 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 you've get, get, been getting some odd ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I love the I Someone like the just odd wrote ones. good, good, good. Yeah. Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. know. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know a few times. We'll take it. I, I love it. it. Um, I love it. Anyways, <laughs> 
Thank you for listening. And don't forget, the truth is out there. It is. And get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Don't say anything. Get a lawyer. Your phones are bugged. Bye. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.